Oh man. This is actually a really nice loop. To just idle on. Just hang out for a while. Alright, hey guys, so finally got a PS5. That was a pain in the ass. Still largely un unobtainable, so this is just getting silly at this point. <laughs> but it's my 10 year anniversary year slash 10, 100,000 subscribers year celebration dual extravaganza thing. And we're kicking things off with playing the remastered, re-release, remake thing of one of the games that we started this channel with in the first place. I'm gonna have mixed feelings. Cause... They don't... <laughs> I've seen some stuff of this game and I'm just... Cause we did the trailer reaction and so on before and it's like... I don't love the all these changes! But uh, Demon's Souls is probably my favorite from software game. Oh, this is weird. That was like a THX tr logo. <laughs> where it incorporates, the, or like the Marvel logo, where they incorporate the stuff in. Hello. Unavailable. Gonna assume default. Color grade is good usually good for when you're making videos. Okay, I don't need a subtitle for that part. I've never so strongly got the feeling of watching a song cover in video game form. <laughs> like it's so discreetly like, ob it's so very obvious that it's not by the people that made the original game. Like it's, there's like an overpowering sense of it being by somebody else. It's like, it's, it's hard to express unless you're just like, we're just oh, no no speaker stuff please immersive vibration just want to invert my look you customize the touchpad that's kind of neat camera there we go there we go just had to fix that real quick to be correct that's a nice feature to have turning your helmet on and off if you want to be able to see your character I'm fine with that Loading server. Body type A or B. Sup. 
he's all detailed and things. Is there a randomize button? Mm. Okay. Uh, we got a glimpse of it in the intro too. Oh, it's not correct. It's like adjacent, but not. Mm. <laughs> yep. Does he have a different stance? That's interesting. The hunter stands up. The magician stands up. So you can like choose a posture. No, I don't think you choose it. I think it's your equip load. That's kind of interesting. So I think they have a visible indicator of your current equip load indicated by how, whether or not you're slouching. That's interesting. Starting gift kunai. No, thank you. Slow healing. Stamina recovery. MP. Just g gives you better drop rates. I feel like one of these has an obvious benefit compared to the other ones, but we'll see. Hey, you can save your character, your created characters, so you don't have to remake them again, which is always nice. Let's look at these presets. We got Scarface. A decent number of presets, so you don't have to. <laughs> I don't. I wasn't ready for that face tattoo. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> oh, here's where. He, he, okay, <laughs> they 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 made the type of characters that players make, <laughs> where you really just go into an interesting place with the color of your character. That's an interesting, it's interesting to acknowledge the fact that like, yeah, you were always able to make your character just go in that direction with crazy colors, so why not just actually have pre-mades that are like a semi-good looking version of that? This is interesting looking. There's just some commitments here. I, I, I really dig how there is a huge list of pre-made characters. It looks like you have like 24 options per gender, basically. Oops. Which gives you a decent chance of, of uh, having one that you actually like without having to like fiddle for a long time and then get really frustrated that you can't get somebody to turn out the way you want them to. And there's like that certain combination of like realistic, regular looking faces, and then a then a mix of like edgelord faces that you can put in there. Like this lady here. Cause people want that. This purple man. <laughs> and like this guy's just having a bad time. <laughs> I'm tempted to pick this guy. It's a good look. But let's take a look at the features. Got the skin options. Okay. So there are pre-made face chunks that are essentially at the top and, and bottom of the face. Then you can get really granular. Really granular. Like maximum depth, minimum height. Just really squish his face. But then wide as possible. And he's just like... He looks like you've set your TV to the wrong aspect ratio, like something's wrong. Completely different eye shapes, but then you can also pick the irises themselves. Ooh! Reptile eyes. And there's the nega eyes that he had. And we had these ones. And you can choose each color individually. Have some fun with that. Oops. And similar granularity with mouse and jaw. Okay, let's see all the hairstyles. That's the biggest 
change you have. Everything else is just tweaking features. They've chosen to split. Oh, this is this is actually pretty good. So you have a mustache menu that is separate from the beard menu, and you can layer the beard and mustache and sideburns separately. This is the most customizable facial hair I've ever seen in a video game. Like, that's actually really interesting. <laughs> There's three separate layers. I have never seen that before. Not even two layers, let alone three, where you can separately set the mustache and the beard and the sideburns and mix and match whichever combination you like. That's a great idea. That's a really good idea. That lets, that lets them massively increase their options. These are called decals. <laughs> Paint and tattoos, scars and blemishes. Yeah, this is the, the big impact stuff, as opposed to the slow tweaking of minor facial features. Okay, here, here we're in the, tat, the makeup section. And the face markings. This one looks like some... <laughs> this one looks silly to me. The skull. Maybe it's just because it's ruined by all the military shooters that let you do that. Got a lot of anime cross scars, then we have claw scars. Now we're in blemishes menu. I'm pretty happy with this preset. So let's go to the preset. And uh, do I want to keep his eyes red? Or do I want to switch to purple? He's going to have a bad time. Anyway, we're going to immediately cover him up with armor anyway. Is your neck exposed? That seems like a miscalculation. Like you're worried enough about your sh your incoming blast to have this giant shoulder guard, but then your neck's just open. I don't think that was in the original fluted armor. Sorry, I'm protective of this shit because... The fluted armor is literally, it's been in the, my thumbnails, or it's been in my character's design on this channel since the beginning. Like, I've gone through like three iterations of the banner where I'm always wearing the fluted armor, and I just, I can't get over the fact that like, this is not the fluted armor. There's several things that don't match. The helmet doesn't match. It doesn't have like the right size and proportions to it. Several parts of the, el of the armor are just like weird looking. The neck's exposed. That's strange. I need to name this guy. Gestalt should be fine for now. It's uh, defined as a organized system that is seen as more as being more than the sum of its parts. Which is kind of what I've always felt about Demon Souls. Like it's easy to list off all these weird issues it has, but for some reason it's just always felt better than can be summarized. I don't really have any creation to save. I guess the eyes. If I need to recreate, find the foundation of the character. Oh, vocals. And animation style? Oh, maybe the slouching and standing is standard. Okay. That's interesting. What? Wow, that is not even similar looking armor. That trust me. They took out the bulge. The fluted armor is supposed to bulge at the bottom of the chest piece. Like, it looks weird to have it just be looking like a regular chest piece. Like, it's a really weird, iconic design. It's on the cover of the game. You think you could, of all things, you would just leave that one the same. There's like a lot of cloth and, and like leather now. 
which looks like a Dark Souls design, which is not what Demon Souls actually looked like. There's actually distinct differences between Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Where's a sample button? Oh. What? This is a mistake, huh? There's no sample button, so you can't just keep playing the sounds of one of them over and over again. You have to switch around. Hmm. <laughs> Not the strongest opinions right now. But yeah, normally you have a button to keep clicking to play more audio samples of the same one. So you can feel what its range is. Alright. I think we're ready to go. I would like to defeat this guy to for once. The twelfth by channeling the power of souls brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valifax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old King Alant had roused the old one, the great beast below the Nexus, from its eternal slumber. And that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls lose also their minds. The mad attack the sane and chaos reigns. Valifax also spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. And the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors lured by the possibilities braved the fissure to breach the accursed land. But none have returned. Pure of the Twin Fangs. Yet the silent chief. Saint Urbane. Skurva the Wanderer. The sixth Saint Astria with her knight. Gaul Vinland, and Sage Frake, the visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Oh, has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? That's some dedication. What's this, a weird portal or whatever? Fuck it, just go straight in. Not, not even gonna hesitate for a second. It's interesting, uh, having now play, uh, read 21 volumes of Berserk so far, which I hadn't really read in all my previous times with the Souls franchise, really. It's interesting seeing some similarities. Like, that's the first thing that came to mind when I saw that horde that they were showing in that intro of those giant super monsters fighting 
and kind of then, like taking over the world and I'm like, oh, this all is specifically reminiscent of elements of uh, of Berserk, post-eclipse and all that. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a heavy boy. Oh, I'm a heavy boy. That's gonna get me in trouble for now. Okay. Hello, new pause menu. Does this pause the game? Because I sure can't see past it. Nope. Oh god. <laughs> It's one of the reasons you potentially don't want it to be completely full screen, is because it would uh, screw you over in this situation. Let's see. Just take my pants off. I'm still really heavy. Okay. It's a better situation, I guess. Oops. I was just, God damn it! I've been playing Nintendo platforms lately and now I'm all mixed up on how to control consoles. Alright, I look a little better having actual some armor on, but... <laughs> this will help us roll. Man. There's like an element of like... The graphical fidelity is great, like look at the water moving around and there's like this slime on the water and like... All this plant life making the area... Uh, making everything really envi- like the environment's really... This shafts of light coming through. Like, it's really detailed and dense in a way that the previous game was sparse. But at the same time, removing that sparseness doesn't feel right to me. Because I specifically, I, I think of Dark of Demon Souls as this big, vast, gray castle with this desaturation to it and all that. So I've got real mixed feelings about the idea of removing that from it. For some people this will just sound like pedantic whining and stuff like that, but it's it's uh I'm having my version of what people had when they when the same company did the remake of Shadow of the Colossus, and all these lifelong Shadow of the Colossus fans were like, no. That, that color scheme, that visual style, and everything from the original game, that wasn't a flaw to be fixed. It wasn't like, like, because to some extent it was like, oh, it's the 2000s, whenever a game was brown and had bloom on it and so on. Yeah, but like, Sh Shadow of the Colossus had like an overpowering, cartoonish amount of bloom on purpose that had a, and it gave it a, a distinct art style. And this was all about the colorless fog, as they've even been saying in this game. And the, uh, and the removal of all life. So you go to these big public areas that were, like, major works of human creation. And they were just sparse gray brick and not a lot else. And so filling it up with, like, plant life isn't just, like, an increase... It's not exclusively an increase in graphical fidelity and therefore a... Just an objective net positive in, in visuals. Because there's, like, art choices that go beyond just the details of them. Look at the mist guy going by. I like that the... I like that the cloud... The, the ghosts have, like, a misty trail behind them. That's enough of you. It is a trip to see a Souls game with this absurd level of graphical fidelity. Even if it feels like I'm playing a Souls-like by a different company. But like all the... Uh, from Software themselves are a double-A company. Like they don't, they just aren't that big as far as I'm aware. So they can't usually do stuff like this necessarily. Like I don't think Elden Ring is going to look as good as the Demon Souls remake. But uh, especially all the companies that are inspired by Dark Souls to make all the Souls likes I've been playing for the last decade, uh, they're all double A companies of even smaller scale than From Software and some indie companies. But a lot of double A people, like the types of the people that make the surge. Actually forgotten what I'm doing here a little bit. Oh, because it's a new mechanic to vault. Ow. 
Oh, that was new. They added a mechanic here. That was one of the weirder, kind of frustrating elements of Demon's Souls that is worth looking at, is the fact that, uh... There was a weird discovery you would eventually make that at certain very, very few parts in the game, there was like a little area you could vault over, or a ledge you could climb, and you would climb in by just rubbing your character into it. You just walk into it, and they'd, they'd, they'd do an animation, you're like, WHAT?! And you're like, I didn't fucking know he could do that. And then he would proceed to not do that in any other game. Like that's not a that's not a mechanic in any other in any other from software game where you just walk into a ledge and climb over it. I imagine a lot of people that have played the original Demon Souls don't even know that you can do that. Because there's so few times it comes up, and I think and I think basically none of them are mandatory. There's basically a couple parts where you can basically strand yourself and be like, I, I can't get out of here. What, what do, I, do I have to jump off the ledge and die? And then you can accidentally, in that situation, when in desperation, realize, wait, I can climb? When have I been able to climb? What is this? <laughs> it's kind of mind-blowing. People have mixed feelings a little bit, I guess, because, like, on one level, you're like, oh, a secret! I feel good! I found a secret! But on the other hand, you're like, what is this? Why is this mechanic so obscure? I wanna, let's look around a little bit. They're gonna put all this work into this environment. Look at that nice, disheveled mess of, of a castle falling apart. Big use of blue orange contrast, which is just not like people use it all the time, and I, I use it on purpose when I can get away with it in thumbnails because it's, it's obviously effective for contrast and it comes easily. You just give the whole game a cool, like a blue cool color temperature, and then put fire in it, and then you have orange blue contrast and it pops. But that's a distinct, different choice than the game they're emulating. I totally understand the Shadow of the Colossus people now. <laughs> Where I'm like, oh, yeah. Blue Point just makes wildly different choices. Hey, buddy. Goodbye. It was a. I appreciate you coming by. Am I the bad guy? <laughs> God, I haven't played a Souls game in ages. I'm gonna embarrass myself. I should check all of these just in case. Because they teach, apparently, there's new mechanics. Even if it's just the old mechanic, but now you press circle. I wouldn't mind practicing parrying, but I'm a little afraid of uh, accidentally dying early. And this is the one place where you can't go back if you die. Look at you. Hey, big guy. Oop. Stamina management. Oop. Goofed that up a bit. Ooh. Watching the... Watching all the souls come flying out of him. They specifically set up the idea that... You grow large and swole with the souls themselves. Which is an ongoing thing that I, I couldn't remember if it was like a fan theory or a canonical element of how souls work. But here these guys are like, I'm a big jacked dude because I'm full of souls. And then when you defeat them, they, they come pouring out. I mean, you can see them like flowing out of his visor. Hey, buddy. That that health bar is way the hell up there, though. I wonder if I can make it bigger. It's just kind of... I know that they're trying to do minimal UI in a lot of modern games, but, like... It's kind of useful information how much health I have or how much stamina I have. I'm totally fine with a giant Monster Hunter-style health bar. 
If it means that I it can keep track of my information better. It didn't have any backup, huh? But if you're new here, this is my fourth playthrough on this channel of Demon Souls. I have one in 2013 when I first started. I did a magic playthrough where I was handing off my controller with another person each level. And then we did, uh, I did a four years later playthrough. Which at that time I was like, wow, I've been doing this for so long. It's been four years since last time. That's incredible. That was four years ago. <laughs> uh, gonna turn to dust tomorrow. Oh, this is, this is actually worth mentioning. There's a there's a there's an interesting irony to the fact that this is the flagship co uh, product of an entire console, which is the fact that Sony, if I remember correctly, uh, deemed that uh, Demon's Souls was too low quality to publish. From what I can remember, the original Demon's Souls was just trashed by people bef like behind the scenes that got had a chance to look at it and decide whether or not to publish it and stuff like that. It was seen as such a low quality game that it wasn't worth publishing. And so Sony refused to publish this game and uh, it had to be published by Atlas. And now Sony's like, wow, let's in this Dark Souls craze that we like didn't embrace enough at the in the first place and then it jumped ship and left our console and got popular on PC and Xbox. Uh, Wow, we love Dark Souls now. It's our favorite thing. We're gonna have we're gonna have Blue Point make an HD remake of the entire game, and that's gonna be the flagship video game of our entire new console. Like it was the thing to buy. And that turnabout is fucking hilarious. Is this it? God, I hope I can do it on my first try. Cause I might make myself replay it just to do it. I'm not sure if I've ever beaten them on my first try. Hello. But yeah, never mistake me talking about the visuals of this game as me saying that they're bad. Because look at this. It's fucking great. I, I would love my fantasy games to look like this. Although I also am a big fan of stylized visuals instead, too. I'm only- I only poke at them based on whether or not I think they're good at being an HD remake of Demon's Souls. And that is a mixed bag. Oh god, here we go. Oh, this is a very different visual. Okay, I immediately fucked that up. Damn it. Ah. I was having some troubles there with the camera angle is weird. The soul of the lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. Soul of the lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. <sighs> this is the Nexus. It holds together the northern land of Boletaria. Quit the Nexus, but the five archstones will guide thee to the outer lands. You have died, and Nexus has imprisoned your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. Don't even try. However, by capturing demons' souls, you can reclaim your corporeal body. They move the posture, I think. <laughs> 
Here's a familiar sight. Hello. Well, time to go try again. All right, back to my original file. <laughs> Attempts were made, but I don't have the patience to do like the five to ten minutes or whatever of running back each time to then get immediately creamed because I'm out of practice. That's unfortunate. I, wa I really wanted to do it. Hey, everybody. Stockpile Thomas. Blue, blue guy McSad. This guy that managed to die. Because he's probably fighting the blue guy. There you go. Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls. Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero. <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the arch stones. Now go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed Politaria. A cutscene. Is that always happening or just the first time? Because you wanted to point him out. You came for demon ah. souls. Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero. But it's all the same. You're just another prisoner of the Nexus. We're welcome here. As long as we keep slashing up demons. <laughs> Full facial animations. They've arrived. I'm Stockpile Thomas. That's a weird name. When the scuds came, I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here in this nexus my wife and daughter fell victim to the demons but i would be worthless in battle at the very least i hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons i would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage it covers his face. There, it's like there's a lot of mugging going on. It's like they're trying to make up for the lack of acting in the last several games by just getting all that facial animation in all at once. Because like it's like a big rubbery face that like really heavily emotes every look. But they also like very clearly like reset to default and then like and here's the emotion this line is said with and it, like you can see them like sliding in and out of each emotion really like in a really rigid sort of way that's like considering how considering how up to date all the visuals are in this game for modern gaming these animations are weirdly dated looking it looks like a uh, mass effect 1 a little bit where it's like and this is the line they pro the line this line is programmed to look sad and this line in this line i'm supposed to look happy and they just like enter the modes that are like the four faces that character can make when the scourge came I abandoned my wife and daughter and fled like a coward. When I came to, I was in this nexus. I haven't dared venture outside these walls since. I wish I could do more, but <laughs> I am ignorant of the world beyond these walls. It's interesting. It's like it's not it's not horrible. It's just way more cartoony looking than I expected given the uh the art direction that everything else is going in. The uh the facial expressions are like really exaggerated. Oh, it kind of feels like fable. My candle maiden cared for me during my first days here. She says very little, but has a kind heart. 
She's just the age my young daughter would have been. Poor, poor girl. Trapped here with her eyes occluded by wax. If only something could be done to help her. I mean, wax comes off, so I assume it's on purpose. If only something could be done to help her. The next sealed binding. I don't think I can put that one away. Noble's Lotus. Or an inspect button. This menu has no item descriptions. Okay. Best of luck to you. That's the anti-poison one. Gotcha. Oop. Did they still react if you ran away? I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. Wait. Where are you off to? Yep. <laughs> I still react when you walk away without without actually exiting the, the menu. Mm, you knew here. Are you here for my services? The name's Baldwin. I'm just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons. Or forge the ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. And with my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, eh? Not a bad deal, eh? Upgrade my weapon. I have a mail breaker? Height shield. Let's see, so I don't have the souls, and yeah, I still need hardstone shards. So we need to get parts. I can tell you're not going to last long here. Damn. Look at his mouth motion. <laughs> Look when he talks. It's really it's exact it's shown extra by the fact that he's got a beard and everything. They have incredibly like guy yeah like mouth mo it's like they're trying to get something out of their teeth. Like like they have like gum or peanut butter in their mouth and they have to like do a huge mouth motion to do something. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons. Or forge the ones you already have. With your souls. I can eke out a living, and with my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, eh? I think they're trying to make them the, the ex expressions larger because the camera doesn't get close to them, so it makes the expressions more obvious at a distance. If you haven't heard, there's another blacksmith at the entrance to Stonefang Mine. He's an eccentric old man. He knows his trade well. He's the only sane one left in a town of soul-starved men. If you do meet him... No, forget it. That stubborn old Nidibel will just chase you off. There aren't enough smithing tools in this temple to handle all the work. Only certain ores can be used to forge weapons. But you'll just have to make do. And be thankful that I can do anything for you at all in this forsaken place. I'm thankful that I can do anything. And he sells his sharpening stone. And some basics. Alright. No interesting. I can tell you're not gonna last I can tell tell you're gonna last long here. They try to make the skipping around work better by having it not uh they, they have each line fade in and out each time. I gotta choose what weapon I wanna pick this time around. Might be a strength build? I should check what my four years ago run was. I think my original re run was a spear. So I might go with a giant sword this time or something. Guts it up. Oh my, how has this happened? Has God abandoned us for King Alant? Failing to show proper respect? Oh, Mbasa. Not having a good time? Oh, Mbasa. Oh, Mbasa. Could use a review on what people we have at the beat. What's what's it say? This is the way. Fine or foul? That's the voting system now. This is legendary. Fine or twelve thousand votes? God damn! There really is only one thing to do on the PS5. Yeah, these are the actual built-in messages. 
I dig this element of the fact, like, one, there's just like a tutorial, extended tutorial here in the game where that's famous for not telling you what to do. Like, that's, that was never entirely true, actually. But it does take half your health away immediately, which is a dick move. Let's take a look upstairs. You betcha these people just jumped off and died. Always trust a false god. That's weird advice. I believe no one's up here. A little upvoting never hurt anyone. <laughs> okay. Straight to the point, I guess. Look at this place. I can dig this whole place just being showered in a golden glow. In fact, I kind of wish they cut back on the blue. Just have this place just be all gold of varying brightnesses. That's me pointing back towards the sort of the more monochrome visuals that a lot of the game previously had. Hmm, that's blocked. Left. Yeah, but it's blocked. How'd this guy manage this? Are you fighting someone or you just jumped off? He just decided he was done. Was that blocked before? That wasn't, right? No. They've d hmm, I could be wrong. I don't obsessively replay the same games over and over again, so my, not my memory isn't always exactly where it could be. I don't even slightly recognize that door, though. That's for sure. The Tower Queen. And that one's just gone. And there's the Dwarf. These are all nice and familiar. King Alant, I think, is supposed to be that picture. The different regions, the plague. <laughs> Look at that big smile. Yeah, that's all true to form. I remember people were wondering whether they would go back and restore the deleted, ch the the unfinished chapter, because this whole room's shaped like this because there was supposed to be six chapters or six worlds, and then presumably they just cut one of them, like they didn't finish it or it wasn't good enough or something, and so they just destroyed that statue, and so it's got like the remnants of what of like, it's a very direct reference to the remnants of an unfinished part of the game. But I don't think I would want somebody besides From Software to finish that. That just seems like a bad idea. Ooh. These glyphs always rippled. Hmm. I'm not sure if I like the explicit water reflection. I kind of like that the glyphs just rippled when you ran across them and it was weird. Like it was a magic floor. I don't know. I'm trying to. I'd have to go back, I guess, to check. But I don't think it was supposed to be explicitly fire. Uh, water. Uh, fire was the wrong word. Good job. Oh, that's nice. Don't remember if that was there before or not. But uh, you get an explicit equipped burden percentage, and your souls required are listed on top of just your soul level, so you know how much you can level up. Anyway. I just went back and checked my previous playthrough, and yeah, by the end of last playthrough, I was running around with a... I can't even use this yet, can I? No, I need to level up my, my decks first. But uh, last game, by the end, I was wielding a giant slab of guts fucking buster sword, so... I guess we're gonna do a decks build this run. Just to, just to mix it up. The Gates of Boletaria. A huge stone castle in the heart of the northern kingdom of Boletaria. Hungry soldiers attack trespassers, their souls stolen by demons. While nearby, terrible dragons have taken roost.
I love his completely ridiculous mouth full of gore. It's like, hey, this dragon's flying around. He's got like a hundred bodies in his mouth right now. Not literally, but it's, it's a lot. It's a hell of a thing. Oh, well, that's my intro to this world. Things are going good. Look at that scale. Oh, I know where that is. <laughs> we know that location. Everything you can see, you can go there. As long as you mean that place and that place. Hey, buddy. Oh! It's a short-ass weapon. <laughs> Surprisingly hard to have a follow-up swing to your own attack. There you go. I guess you gotta go from heavy to, to quick. Because if you go heavy, heavy, then you just stand there and swing at nothing. Yeah, these these like they're like angry murder hobo dudes where they just flail and flail and flail. So if the if the opening attack misses, then the follow-up can be really bad news for you. Hello. Oop, missed that. And then this should all be closed. Yep. If you don't give up, you can proceed. That's worth checking. Is there still world and character tendency? There it is. It actually has an entire menu element dedicated to the character, the world that doesn't exist. That's kind of funny. So previously it was this cool circular screen. I don't necessarily love the change to a weird, like explicitly menu-y menu, as opposed to like this, like it was like a picture that had all them in it. That was kind of neat. But this one looks like it might be easier to read. But it was always a little hard to read in general when you're trying to tell exactly how light or dark your character tendency is or the world tendency. And figuring out how to influence that stuff was always really arcane. It was, a, it was, I think there was always kind of a mix of like poorly understood, but also maybe poorly implemented. Where it's like a really cool idea, but you couldn't really understand what you were doing that would change it in game. While also making it relatively hard to tell what your current score is. I gotta get any weapon besides this one. Stats, please. <laughs> That didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work at all. Whoop. I'm getting in trouble here. There we go. They better have kept the laughing and the music. Not that fight. The next one. I need it. It fuels me. It's the. It's my favorite. Hey. Hey, I did it. There you go. I've always been trash at pairing. I pick him up. And he goes, whoosh. Let me in. The danger room. Prepare to get overwhelmed. There's a guy upstairs being a dick. These guys are charging you in melee. And there's a hole to fall in when you're in the middle of all that chaos. Sometimes the best option is just to fuck off. <laughs> Ow! Shit. Okay, not my proudest. No, thank you. Bye. That reminds me, I should review my block percentage. Is that 100%? I think it is. How do I look at- oh, there we go. Yeah, physical damage, 100%. 
you do start off with a 100% block shield. Uh, death hole. This has always been an interesting hole. It gave me Final Fantasy X vibes when I first saw it. Because it looks like all the little souls flying around from that game. So I kind of got what it was. But like it looks like there's stuff down there. So I always thought you could just hop in there and go. Oh, I believe that is the pit from later in the game. If you come back at what? Dark world tendency? Light world tendency? I don't know. Uh, that one locked door over there. I think that does lead to this area, which is a really precarious platforming section with loot in it. One that I didn't even find until like my third or fourth playthrough of the game because it's always locked. Preference for sh for not using a shield or not. This is just a This is a series of like monster closets made of people Ooh, he turned it and he turned it for a little crunch there but Yeah, in these in these close quarters trying to navigate through here. It makes a lot of sense to stick to having a shield This is just, just dudes charging at you and you're kind of working with the camera to just kind of slowly work your way through Oh god, I hit the wall. I feel like this part's designed to make you more cautious. Just, just about everything, really. Oh god, camera. Okay. There we go. Destroy. And then you can see the bridge down there. And more hints at that area you can't access. And then there's that that milestone landmark, not milestone. I do like it when you can see stuff in the distance and just recognize, oh, that's that place. And you can get there and look back and you're like, oh, that's where I was. Rude. More souls to not use. The mail breaker. Is it safe right now? Hmm. Oh, I can use these. It's just saying that it will do less damage. It'll do 10 less damage, but it will be a little stabby shit, so that's fun. Oh, this is not, yeah, this is not a rapier. It is a little stabby guy. Got, it's got okay reach, partly because he specifically uses it like he's trying to get more reach. He could do those kinds of. He could be stabby with the other sword, but he doesn't. Yeah, that threw me. That's what. That's what threw me off a little bit during my first attempt on the boss. You have different animations if you attack after a roll. Which you need to be ready for. If you're not ready for it, you're gonna be in trouble. Guess who I was? Fire bad. Stop it. Got him. Whoop! Stop that. Ow! Got myself in a little trouble there. It is cartoonish how little crescent grass heals you. Oop. That's the guy upstairs, but it's not the other problem. Oh, right. Lest we forget. Oh, wait, don't I have to wait for... I think I have to wait for this to happen. Bye bye. Where is the secret item? Oh, it's here. I thought it was at the bottom for some reason. Big splashes. Oh. Yep. Yeah. It's always a little finicky. Oh, you successfully parried, but you 
got something wrong about the timing of the follow-up, so it doesn't work. But yeah, being back with grass is interesting. I love a lot of stuff about this game, but grass is weird. Just because I think the Estus Flask is, like, genius. I, I love the idea that it has X number of heals per checkpoint, and so it's this constant risk-reward balance of, like, do I, do I keep pushing forward or do I go back? Like, every heal is impactful and important because you know how many you have, and that's really important. Hey, buddy! Nope. Thank you. You bastard. <laughs> that was really menacing, the boulder. They, they really had weight to it. They sold it. Very well. Friend. Friend. But I, I, I dis when I once you get used to Asus Flasks, I do dislike when oop, when Demon Souls and Bloodborne have limited uh, a limited quantity of healing items. It's like a weird mix where like the amount you can hold at any given time out feels like too many, but also you can run out completely, and that just means farming. And boy, that's never an upgrade <laughs> to the experience. You've got a shield, you dick. I've got your death. Oh, he, sh he blocked. Fuck. Ah! Actually in trouble right now. Can't block that as well. He does... I think that's what sold me on using a... This guy's almost invisible. That's what sold me on using a shield in the, uh, and a spear in the first place on my first run, I think, when I finally beat the game. I think was just the fact that, like, this motherfucker can block and attack? I want to do that. Ooh. Hello, Dr. Scary Boy. I'm gonna want to open up a thing first, you know? But yeah, the, the, uh, the power of bonfires is diminished in Demon's Souls. Because of the fact that you can't, you're not getting your Estus Flasks back when you rest at one. You're just healing. So you're just healing your current health bar with the trade-off being that everyone responds. Which sucks, by comparison. Whereas the reward of getting all of your Estus Flasks back is a way more enticing reason to use a checkpoint. That said, I'm pretty sure in Demon Souls it was designed for you to just die. I don't think you were ever supposed to choose to respawn everybody. So it was a different system altogether. In part because there there are no checkpoints. It's just a folding... Oh god. Nope. Oh, that missed. That was a miss. Oh, he's running for me! Because he knew I was healing. There we go. Ta-da! Goodbye, you. There's a bit of ragdoll, but not as much as, as there can be. <laughs> One day I'll be strong enough to wear pants. Or I'll just wear lighter clothes, because they, they did my set wrong, boy. Yeah, I know we can do this stuff, but it's a bad fit right now. As nostalgic as it is to play with the, uh, the fluted armor set, or the, like, the default one. Uh, it doesn't work if they changed what it looks like. So I'll probably just switch to some lighter stuff so I can wear pants. Bye! I love that guy. He just gets really impatient. He doesn't even, doesn't even wait for you to show up. Ah -ha -ha! I fucked up. Jeez. Oop, there he goes. <laughs> they have not fixed the pathing. There you go. 
That's always an important part to do. I do like the lighting in here. One of my favorite parts of Dark Souls 2 is the, uh, bye bye. The gutter. Or the Grave of Saints, whichever one is the one that's all dark. Keeps falling. They're still bad at navigating this area. Which is good because there's so many of them. Oh god, I'm gonna die. I died! <laughs> My exact fucking fear. Gah, right by the checkpoint. No! <laughs> it's such a little murder hallway. What a nightmare. Alright, well. The true Souls experience begins. And we're gonna, we're gonna be playing the whole fucking franchise this year again. So, I'll get better eventually. Oh my god, is that the Lord Vessel?